Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm super excited because today in my hands I have Kadas Vim 4. This is a very powerful single board computer with the latest generation of IAM logic system on a chip. This computer had quite of a journey. It was sent from China and I received it here in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. So in this video we're gonna do unboxing and review of this really powerful machine. In 2022, despite the global chip shortage, there are two trends on the market of this type of devices. The first trend is that finally we have low cost single board computers with RISC-V architecture capable of running Linux. And the second trend is that we also have a lot of affordable, very powerful devices with RV8 architecture which have 64-bit support. And Kadas Vim 4 is exactly this. It has ARM logic system on a chip that is with ARMv8 architecture with 64-bit support and extremely powerful new generation of Mali GPU. The video is divided into chapters, so let's get it started. And by the way, if you like my attitude towards single board computers, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's start with the unboxing. Kadas Vim 4 comes in a small but very solid cardboard box. Inside the box, of course, we can find Kadas Vim 4, also a couple of antennas and a user's manual. This single board computer is manufactured by Kadas Technology. The company was founded in 2016 in China. Their first product on the market was Vim 1, and this is the fourth generation of this single board computer, which is now more powerful and capable than ever. Let's have a look at the technical specifications and explore the interfaces provided by Kadas V4. Just like on a Raspberry Pi, there is a 40-pin header with 2.54mm pitch. It includes I2C, I2S, UART, PVM, analog to digital converters, USB and SPI. The majority of the connectors are uh, on one of the sides of the boards. We have USB 3.0 capable of providing power for up to 1.0 amps. There is a gigabit LAN port, there is an HDMI output and a USB-C port which we are using to power the board. There is also a USB 2 port. On the other side of the board we have three buttons for reset, function and power. If you remember, inside the box there were a couple of antennas. These are the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas and there are dedicated connectors for them on the board. They are on the opposite side of the board, the opposite compared to the buttons and uh, it is using the so-called MHF4 type of antennas. This is a feature that I'm missing on other single board computers such as Raspberry Pi because sometimes you put the single board computer in a region of your apartment where the Wi-Fi coverage isn't that good and an antenna can solve this problem. There are some other super interesting and surprising hardware features which we'll have a look later on when we remove the heatsink and the fan. The back of the board is again full with interfaces. We have M2.5 slot, we also have a micro SD card, there is a gyroscope sensor, there is a, a connector for voltage input which supports between 9 and 20 volts. Furthermore, there are connectors for V by 1, a MIPI connector for display and a couple of connectors for cameras. The SPI flash is also on the back of Kadas Vim 4. And one more thing from the front of the board. There is an HDMI Type-D input port. This means that you can use Kadas Vim 4 to capture video. And considering the very high performance uh, technical specifications of the CPU and the GPU, this is a great feature to have. It is rare to find single board computers on the market with HDMI input, so this is a huge advantage for Kadas Vim 4 I have the version of Kadas Vim 4 with the active cooling kit and the most important part of the hardware is actually below the heatsink and the fan. So let's do a tear down and have a quick look at it. An appropriate Phillips screwdriver is required for this operation. 
However, I have to say that it's not recommended to do a teardown unless you are planning to fix something and in this case I'm doing the teardown only for this video. The heatsink is connected to the printed circuit board with four screws and the fan is connected to the heatsink. So if we remove the heatsink, we are also removing the fan. There is a dedicated connector which is providing power to the fan. So in order to completely remove the heatsink and the fan, we have to disconnect it. For better thermal performance and protection, there is an insulation between the heatsink and the IM logic system on a chip. For the purpose of this video, I decided to remove it so that we can have a closer look at the components, but this didn't go well, so don't do it at home. I've promised you that it's interesting below the heatsink, so let's explore the components. Cadiz V4 comes with 8GB LPDDR4 RAM memory. Right above the IAM logic system on the chip, we can notice the two components for the RAM memory, which are manufactured by Hynix. Probably the most interesting and surprising thing that you find under the heatsink of Cadiz V4 is actually the programmable microcontroller STM32G0. This is a very efficient uh, ARM Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller. The module for the Wi Fi is AP6275S, which includes a chipset from Broadcom. It is a Wi Fi and Bluetooth combo, which supports Wi Fi 6. Cadiz V4 also features two digital microphones. There are around the HDMI input capture device. In terms of dimension, Cadiz VIN 4 is super compact printed circuit board. Actually, it's amazing that we have all these features and connectors on such a small printed circuit board. Furthermore, the dimensions are the same as the previous models of Cadiz VIM, which means like VIM 3 or 2 or even the first VIM, and this allows you to use the same, the same cases. The only difference is the uh, input the HDMI input ca capture device. And speaking about the size, it's even smaller than a Raspberry Pi. Here I have Raspberry Pi 4 and you can see that actually Cadiz V4 is smaller than a Raspberry Pi. Isn't this amazing? All these features in such a compact board. The exact dimensions of Cadiz V4 are 82 by 58 by 11.5 millimeters. And indeed, these very compact dimensions make Cadiz V4 smaller than the regular form factor of a Raspberry Pi. It's smaller than Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, of course, it's bigger than a Raspberry Pi 0. But considering all the, the power that it has and all the connectors, it's amazing that everything is fit together in such a small size. It's, uh, it's the size of a credit card. Actually, the most important thing for any single board computer on the market is the software support. And in the early days, it's normal to have limited software support, but this is not the case with Cadiz Vim 4, because even as of today, and this board is on the market for less than two months, Cadiz Vim 4 has Ubuntu Linux support and Android. And people say it's this board has amazing performance using Android. However, as an open source enthusiast and huge uh, Linux uh, fan, I'm more interested in the Linux image. Over the time, I expect more and more uh, Linux distributions to be ported on Cadiz Vim 4. I'm particularly interested in using Kodi, uh, the open source media center on Linux on uh, Cadiz V4, it will be a great fit for my TV setup, especially with this very powerful board because uh, Cadiz V4, as we said, has the new generation of Mali GPU that supports up to 4K displays. So let's have a look at the software and let's install Linux on this board. 
In order to boot KDSV4 for the very first time, I need to connect it to my monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. I'm also plugging an Ethernet cable, which is connected to my local area network and my router. To power the board, I also need to plug an appropriate USB-C cable in the dedicated connector. Please note that power supply is not included into the kit, therefore I'm using my own power supply. It's very important that the power supply can provide enough current for the board to boot. In my case, I'm using 2.5 amperes uh, power supply. When everything is ready with the wiring, I can press the button to turn on this single board computer. So here is the whole setup on my desk. As soon as the board boots, a thing called OOWOW loads. This is a standalone embedded service for seamless online operating system installation and device maintenance provided by Kados. At the moment, it's in a, a better stage and it's something like BIOS on your regular personal computers. It includes a wizard which is advertised as the easiest way to install any operating system on Kedis V4. Unfortunately for me, the first time when I tried it, I got to a network failure. After several attempts for installation, all of which failed due to the network, and after checking that I actually have a very stable network and my internet connection is okay, I tried to debug that and I figured out that the problem is called by the DNS hard-coded on Kedis V4. The solution was pretty straightforward and simple. I've logged in remotely via SSH to Kedis V4 and edited the DNS by setting the DNS provided by Google. As soon as I did this, I was able to continue successfully with the installation. After fixing the network issue, the installation was super easy, just like a walk in the park. The wizard offered me several options for Android and Ubuntu images to download and install. Everyone says Kedis Vim 4 has an excellent Android support and I have no doubts. However, as an open source enthusiast and a U Linux user myself, I'm more interested in trying out the Ubuntu image. I decided to install Ubuntu 22.04 with GNOME Desktop. This is the latest stable long-term support version of Ubuntu and the GNOME Desktop uh, means that it is going to be very user-friendly with a graphical user interface. The installation takes a while, primarily because of the download, which takes some time depending on your internet connection speed. Thanks to the modern technologies and video editing, we can fast forward to the end of the installation where we need to reboot the board. After rebooting the board, in a few seconds Ubuntu Linux will load. We have installed the graphical user interface GNOME and as soon as Ubuntu loads, it will ask us to log in with a username and a password. By default, the username is Kedis and the password is also Kedis. It is highly recommended to change the password to something more secure as soon as possible. Please keep in mind that this is just a reference image. It's not tuned for optimal hardware results as of the moment. Let's open a terminal and have a quick look at it. The uname command shows us that we are running Linux kernel version 5.4 or Kedis v4. The other command LSB release shows us information about uh, the current Ubuntu version. We are running uh, Ubuntu 22. Dot four. As I said, this is the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu. The code name is Jami. A couple of other commands to verify that the CPU info and the mem info are properly recognized. You can see that uh, these are standard commands for Linux that you can execute on any computer. However, here we're getting the results from Kedis v4. We've installed Ubuntu with a graphical user interface and we're running GNOME, so let's take advantage of it and check the Ubuntu settings. As you can see, GNOME offers really nice and convenient a graphical user interface for displaying settings. The particular version of GNOME that we are running as of the moment is 42. Once again, we can verify that this is a 64-bit 
uh, operating system, which means that we are using the full potential of this very powerful ARM logic system on a chip, which is part of Cadus V4. It is also important to know that as we can see in the settings, we are running Wayland as a graphical display protocol. Wayland is replacing the legacy X11. Uh, Wayland has been in development for quite some time, but now it's becoming mainstream and we can see it in more and more Linux distributions by default. Now we're coming to a very sensitive topic for any customer. And of course, the major question is, what is the price of Cadence V4? As of the moment, Cadence V4 is available on cadence.com for uh, 220 US dollars if you're buying just the computer and 240 US dollars if you're buying uh, the active cooling kit. I'm having the active cooling kit here and you have seen that it has an amazing quality so I definitely recommend you to go and buy this option. Please keep in mind that some shipping and import fees might be applied depending on the region where you live in. It's time to wrap up this video with conclusions and let's start with the advantages of Kedas Vim 4. Actually there are so many advantages that it's hard to list them. Uh, let's repeat some of uh, the most important in my opinion. First of all, I'm super impressed by the CPU. Cadence V4 comes with CPU from IAM Logic that it has eight cores. It's RMV8 64-bit support CPU. Uh, this is something that we're gonna see in future in, in more and more single board computers because definitely the trend is to go with new ARM uh, CPUs with 64-bit support. Furthermore, Cadence Vim 4 and the IAM Logic system on a chip include Mali GPU capable of playing video up to 4K resolution. This is another major advantage. There's so many connectors on the board. Very compact size, um, in enormous number of connectors. In terms of dimension, another advantage, it's even smaller than a Raspberry Pi. More powerful, more connectors, and smaller than a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, so another advantage that I would like to highlight is actually something that you rarely see on single board computers. And this is the HDMI input, which allows you to use this little powerful board as, uh, um, in, uh, as a device for capturing video. Now, let's talk about the disadvantages. Are there any disadvantages for this board at all? Well, not really. Actually, the list of disadvantages is pretty much zero. Of course, it would be nice to see open source hardware version of this. Yeah, this is not open source hardware. It's not certified by the Open Source Hardware Association, but it's not a real disadvantage in terms of technical specifications. The technical specifications are brilliant. And yeah, as an open source enthusiast, I would like to see more open source hardware, especially with ARM logic. Um, systems on the chip, maybe this is coming in future. Uh, a lot of people say that this board is expensive. Actually, I don't think this is true. This is not a disadvantage in my opinion because considering that it is available on the market, unlike the Raspberry Pi 4, which as of the moment uh, is out of stock pretty much anywhere, Cadiz Vim 4 is in stock and the price is actually excellent value for money if you consider all the uh, features that it brings. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you like my attitude and approach towards single board computers and open source in general. Stay tuned for new videos.